Well, good evening, guys. Kevin the Comic Doctor coming to you with another live CGC unboxing. Guys, four boxes. Two more arrived today. Are we going to do it? Are we going to do four boxes? I don't know. We'll see how I feel. <laughs> I'm pretty, pretty beat. But uh, two for sure. And if I've got the energy, if I've got the gusto, we'll do four CGC boxes. That's about 100 slabs. Are you up for it? If you promise to stick around, hit that subscribe button. Maybe, maybe I will do all four. Guys, I'm Kevin, the comic doctor. I'm a comic book presser. I'm also an authorized CGC dealer and Coca-Cola spokesperson. Located way up in Oshawa, Ontario, Canada. And like they said every week, this is a live CGC unboxing. Uh, the night when I come on, on, on YouTube here and do a virtual show and tell with your comic book. These are not my comic books, my friends. These are client books that are coming back quite rapidly from CGC. Uh, so if you are in the mood for a long... <laughs> I won't be that. I'll zip through them really quick. Uh, Night of Slabs, stick around. And we're also going to talk about a cartoon that has no right to be as good as it is. If you watch, the th if you see the thumbnail that I have there, X Men '97. I did not give much uh, credence to this this cartoon. I didn't even really care to see it. Watch the first episode. Not bad. Watch the second episode. Not bad. Anyways, we'll talk a bit about that later. Have you not? Have you watched the X Men '97 cartoon? If you have, I want to hear from you. I want to hear what you think about that. But in order to do so, you must hit that subscribe button. So please do that, so you can join in the conversation later. I already see a whole variety of ladies and gentlemen here. Hello, everybody. I'll come over to you shortly. And uh, yeah, you know what? Let's get going. Oh, and also this Thursday, a little bit of news. I'll, I'll announce at the end as well. This Thursday. Remember a long time ago, for those of you that have been watching me for any period of time, I've been uh, wanting to get some people on here to talk about Canadian price variants. Well, it's finally happening. Uh, this Thursday, uh, Greg Holland, uh, Doug Salipa from Overstreet, and uh, Angelo Veroni, who is a, uh, I guess you could call him a, uh, a Canadian price variant historian and collector, are going to be here Thursday. Again, guys, I don't do the Thursday nights. So I'm really swamped, but I got the guys together. So we're going to come on here on Thursday night. That's if all the technicalities work out, because I've never done a stream with more than, you know, me and another person, but I'm going to try. Uh, we're going to talk about everything to do with Canadian price variants, guys. These guys know the ins and outs of the CPVs. Any questions you might have about CPVs will be answered that night. So be sure to tune in this Thursday at 8.30 and uh, get your questions ready. Okay, let's see what we got here. All right, first things first, where's my overhead cam? There it is. Let me go to my other overhead cam. There it is. That's what I want. All right, here we go. Okay, I know you guys think I'm full of crap here. I'm not. I'm not full of crap. There we go. Look at that. 9.8 NYX. Maybe they're just being really nice to me and putting like 9.8 to the very front of the box. Uh, first appearance of... Uh, my gosh. My brain's... X-23. My brain... Guy's tired. Very tired. We also have a copy of New Mutants 98 and 9.6. I'm going to move my keyboard like this and I'm going to stack the comics right here so I'm not out of frame because I know you all want to see my pretty face the whole the whole thing here right let me let me grab them here uh all right here we go oh another nine eight I can't I can't misplace these things if I misplace my, my submission forms it becomes a real nightmare okay next we have a 9.8 copy of the Mandalorian number one. We also have a copy of X-Men 94 in a 7.0. That's a sharp looking copy. I'm gonna go quick guys. Four boxes, four boxes, an 8.5 copy. Newsstand of Amazing Spider-Man 300. We also have a copy of uh, Venom 150. In a 9.8, these look like, I think they're Dave's books, but again, I hate when I do that because I always, I'm wrong. I'm usually wrong. What do we got here? Giant size X-Men. Always nice to have giant size X-Men's in the box. 6.5, right there, I'll move that down. We'll get a couple more on here. Spider-Man, uh, the Remos variant. And a 9.8 for Spider-Boy, I believe. And you know what? Nice to have uh, the variant copy of that as well. Also in a 9.8. That's it for me, guys. I got to 
go back over to the uh, chat room as I pack these guys up. Chat window, let's see what you guys are saying. Who's here? Wow, got a lot of guys here today. How you doing? Karen, Ra Karen Race was the first one in the house. Brian's here. Astro Lucky's here. Matthew said, oh yeah, the hockey game's on. 80, 80, not 70. Isn't it 80 he's looking for? Uh... Let's hope so, Brian. I'll go if the game's still on when this is over. I'll go watch. I'm just gonna chill out tonight. I'm freaking tired, fighting off a migraine. Hey, John, how's it going? Any luck? Did that, that thing show up yet? <clears throat> Carlo's here. How you doing? Let's start with some likes to start. Carlo, I think that's a good idea. Astro, I have no idea if they are. It looks like uh, Karen Racer wants four boxes. Are we gonna do four boxes? Hey, Adam, how's it going? John, yippee, Warren, I promise. <laughs> you promise what? What do you promise, Warren? Dave, hey, Doc, excited for Tuesday unboxing time. Thank you for being here, Dave. Thank you for being here. Ask for lucky this Coca-Cola spokesperson, new sponsors. Wow, I know, eh? That's, that's where the money is, guys. The money's in sponsorship. So, uh, you know, I reached out to Coca-Cola. They said, wear my shirt, wear our shirt. And they'll give me like uh, point, uh, half a cent for every uh, three hours of streaming. Um, John's hitting that like button. Good. Um, Cameron Summers, how you doing, Cameron? Fingers crossed. My uh, Marvel Superheroes Secret Wars Eight is back tonight. I have no idea. X Men Seven is what Marvel and Disney needs. Yeah, it was excellent. It's that we're gonna talk about that after the second box. We'll talk about that after the second box. Uh, Ryan's here. How you doing, Ryan? Good evening. Good to see you. Kevin MVP. Great to see the slabs. Lots more to go, guys. We are on uh, box number one of four. Two came on uh, Saturday. Two arrived today. I was kind of hoping that two would not arrive today because I feel inclined to do a really long show. And perhaps we'll just do it get over with. All right, here we go. Let me pull out some more slabs here. There we go. I'm going to grab a bunch of them. I'm going to grab a whole bunch of them here. Hold on. Give me a sec. I can't wait to the day when I reorganize this whole outfit so I can have the slabs kind of set up and ready to go. There's none of this pulling the bungs out and pulling the slabs out. And, you know, anyways, here we go. We have a 9.4 copy of ASM 300. We have another giant size X-Men one. This one's kind of beat up a little bit. And this one has, was it, has some restoration. It says... Spine split sealed to cover. Spine split sealed to cover. So what probably happened here at one point in this book's history is the split, which I can see down here is a split down here. They probably glued the split down to the book itself in which they gave it a... You see, you'd been better off to use tape. Just use tape. Use tape, no purple label. Honestly, a book of that great, I wouldn't even have bothered. Glue's a bad word at CGC. Glue is a bad word. We've got an Iron Man number one. It has a center fold missing. And a 3.5 qualified. We have an amazing Spider-Man. 129. And a 4.5. You saw the thumbnail. Well, here it is. It is a House of Secrets, uh, number 92, first appearance of the Swamp Thing. And that's at a 3.5. If it wasn't for this huge, it has a big crease. I'll show you right here. There's a huge crease that kind of goes a really long crease there. Now, that crease is a little more contained. The book would have been a four, four and a half, in my opinion. Uh, if it had no crease here and no crease there, this book would have been a four, four, five all day long. Um, yeah, those big creases really uh, do affect the grade big time. All right, let me just organize these these submission forms here. Okay, let me keep going. What else we have? This box number one, almost halfway over, guys. Three more boxes to go. So stick around, won't you? We've got a Star Wars number one, a Star Wars number one, and an eight point five. We have. A Primer 2, uh, first appearance of uh, Grendel and the Agent. And this one has an unauthorized signature on it, Wagner. So this book could be a candidate to go back and have the signature uh, authorized. Still no word on the uh, CGC's new service. 
Um, still waiting to get details on that. So things are kind of up in the air. If you have books that have signatures on them, you may want to hold off from sending those in just yet because, yeah, you can get them authorized. Again, I have no idea what it's going to cost, but you can wait. Okay, spawn number one, black and white edition in a 9.6. Okay, the stack is high. Time to go back to the chat room, see what you guys are talking about. Um, oh. What happened there? Uh, Ryan says hello again. Great to see you, Slabs. Cameron says episode five shook me to the core. Yes. It was good. It was really, really good. We're going to talk about X-Men 97 in a little more detail in just a few moments. And what that what that cartoon has started, what I've noticed happening in the comic book world because of this cartoon. And I'll talk about another book as well. Or another series. Another, another publisher as well. Um, Let's do four boxes. Maybe my book will be in there. We could try, Sam. Carlos says, amazing CPV show. Love it. Yeah, I've been wanting to do this. Angelo, guys, I, I met Angelo. Well, camera's out of focus. There we go. I met Angelo, boy, years ago. Um, and he would send me boxes and boxes of Canadian price variants. And happy to report we got a lot of um, a lot of nice, uh, lot of nice results as well. And uh, he even had some really cool, you know, double cover, paying price variants, one, one of a kind type things. But um, uh, I said to him, I said, we need to get you on the show one day. And we kind of went back and forth, back and forth. But he really wanted to get Doug Salipa on the show as well. And Doug Salipa, is, like, he's like, um, he's kind of a Canadian comic book store owner icon. You know, he's been in the, into the game since the, geez, probably since the early 70s. And um, anyways, Doug's going to try to get his iPhone going and get them online um but tomorrow is going to be our run through we're going to check the test all the tech tomorrow night and then go live on thursday hopefully with very little glitches and we'll just have a conversation about canadian price variants so if it's something you're interested in if you are thinking about getting into the canadian price variant racket you want to start collecting those books yourself this is a show you're not going to want to miss and again you're talking about you know you, you, we're going to have three of the uh, foremost uh uh mines when it comes to Canadian price variants so make sure you uh pop by okay let's keep going here we've got a amazing spider-man uh 194 and a 6.0 i'll get that over there doodly doodly do there we go we have a wolverine number three and a oh my gosh and a 9.2 what the frick? Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. This book doesn't even look pressed anymore. Okay, I'll show you. Aggravating. Look at this. Look at this. Look at that. What the hell's that? But the thing is, this book's not a is not a nine two the way it is. So they graded it in nine two, and then some jackass even the bottom corner the bottom corner there look at this right uh, it's hard to see right they oh you can't see it not happy with that one holy cow got a 9.6 on uh these are these are logan's books i think got a 9.6 on x-men 134 it's got a little stain on that. That's why it's a 9.6. This one we were disappointed. This was, a, this, was a, this was a CPR that did not really go very well. I think it was a 6.5 or it was a 6. I don't remember. Gorgeous book on the front. The back has a very slight... Where is it? Yeah, right there. It's kind of, I, talked about, I, I talked about creases. This book is stunning on the front. It presents beautiful. But what do I always say? Look at the back. But even the back on this, it has a relatively, you know, it's got a little crease that kind of goes along the side there. It's not huge, but a bit like that. And they crucified the book and gave it a six. I'm like, wow. It, it just boggles the mind. But I, yeah. Those creases, man. It's those creases. I've seen that happen many times. I always use the example, Peter had given me a whole bunch of Star Wars books, 42s. He had about eight or nine 42s, the Boba Fett book. And they all came back 96, 98, 96, 98, 94, 96, 90, you know, something like that. And then one came back like a, a seven. And I'm like, what the hell? 
and we couldn't figure it out. And so we looked at the notes and there was a crease in the back and we're looking and looking and trying to find, and sure enough, there was a very, very, very light crease that, you know, pressing can't get rid of a broken fibers. You can smooth out a crease, but if there's a crease there, the crease is there to stay. I mean, if the crease is sharp, right? Um, if you've got something like, like this piece of paper is folded down the middle, you know, and the fibers are broken, I can press this smooth, but you're always going to see a faint line. And that's kind of what happened. And, and they, they'll crucify a book, especially a modern book, they're crucifying. All right, let's keep going here. We got other three boxes to go, guys. 38 of you in the room, only 16 likes. What am I doing wrong? Is it the Coca-Cola shirt? Hit the like button, please, if you don't mind. We got a Wolverine number one limited series, just about a million of these this week. By the way, everybody whose books went off are the Frank Miller, Chris Claremont, Rubenstein sign or Rubenstein uh, uh, signatures. They're all gone. They're all they're all going to be at CGC this week. So that's it for that. We've got another Wolverine number number four now, a new stand and a seven zero, and we've got a eight zero number two. Man, these they they they. When I see this, it's so disheartening. They really like what the hell. Okay, I gotta show you this. This is ridiculous. Right? I want you to see it. It's terrible. It looks awful. Right? I want to show it right there. Look at the V. Look where the V is. Never mind the spine. Look at the V. The big dent right by the V. What are they doing over there, man? Unbelievable. Unbelievable. That's box number one, guys. Let's go over to uh let's go over to the uh chat room again. Um anybody go to the sports court sports card expo next week? Not me. X-Men 90s. X-Men 90s. Uh I don't think so. Sports card expo. Hey GTA lady, how's it going? Sean, how you doing, Sean? Long time, no talk. How you doing? Um John Shore, nothing yet, buddy, but we'll figure it out. Yeah, I'll call them this week. I'll call them this week and see what's going on. Uh, I just should have sent you a refund. I don't know what the hell I was thinking. I thought you paid by by, by credit card. That's why. But um, we'll see. Um, X-97 is awesome. GTA Lady says. Adam Donnelly also says. Um, Coke has a promotion with Marvel feature. Yes, I saw that. Did you guys see that? It's a fun little commercial with like Daredevil and Colossus. If you haven't seen it yet, and Black Widow, uh, if you haven't seen it yet, go on to YouTube and type in Coca Cola Marvel and you can check it out there. Mike, how are you? Rock City's in the house. How are you doing? Your bottom border is cutting off the top part of the video. What do you mean? Why the left side shows only half a C, half a G C? What? Unboxing. Okay, that's what I'm showing. Is that bad? You guys can't see that. It looks pretty clear on my screen. Let me know. Um, we'll try to fix it. Mark, how you doing, Mark? Hello, Rock City. <laughs> I know, Mike. I like your genuine disappointment. <laughs> Shows you, okay, well, I know, I, don't, I you know what? I don't like when the books come back looking like donkey shit, you know? Um, like, well, what the hell is this? And now I'm wondering if, now listen guys, sometimes guys don't want their books pressed. They want their books just to go as is. Now I don't know if these might be some of those because they don't even look pressed to me right now. Um, and we don't send books out looking with, with like finger dents on them. So that's aggravating. Again, that's me making comments here, and I really shouldn't because I don't know whose books are whose right now. Um, uh. Rocks, that spy would never have left the shop like they wouldn't have. So, yeah, I can understand why. Pete, thank you. Uh, and three of them. Yeah, and all the Wolverines. What's up with that? Uh, after 500 million investors came in, they hired 25 new graders. Don't say it. A Ranger for Collectors, your books are ready to go, my friend. Your books are ready to ship. They're all here, so uh, you know. Let's uh, let's talk. Um, Gunda, 
Gundam <laughs> Mraj, Gundam Draj, CR, do you re do removals of stickers on comics? Uh, sometimes. Every sticker is different. We can. Uh, we just got a huge order of Playboy books with tons of stickers on them. And they come off nicely on those. They sometimes leave a little little shadowing or uh, but generally speaking we can, but if it's on an older comic, eh, it might be a little difficult. It just depends. James is here. Any updates on signature books for CGC? No, just waiting. I have not received any of the Claremont stuff. I've received none of that stuff. So yeah, it's just a waiting game, my friend. Ryan, looks fine to me. Thanks, Ryan. David. Yeah, thanks. Eric McGowan's screen looks normal. Thanks, Eric. Okay, that's box number one. Let me put all my uh all my uh my invoices on there. Let's go on to box number two. Ugh. <laughs> Look, I'm not even joking. First book I pulled out. I'm not lying to you guys. I'm being really honest. It happened to be another 9-8. Really heavy one. This is uh, Nasicha of the Valley of Wind from 1988. Right there in a 9.8. I don't think I've ever showcased this book on my show before. We also have... Oh, here we go. You want some more X-Men? Here we go. We got an X-Men 130. First appearance of Taylor Swift in number 130. Here we go in a 9.2. First appearance of Guardian in X-Men 109 in a... See, this one looks a little bit better. In a 7.5. Right there. Beautiful. What we got? What else we got? We got a Wolverine number 8. First Mr. Fix-It. In a 9.8. That's what I want to see. We've got a Captain America Annual 8 Wicked cover. Always love this cover. Look, why is it a 9? Only a 9.4. Thought it would be at least a 9.6 this one. What am I missing here? What am I missing? I don't know. Anyways, 9.4. Daredevil, number... One, uh, sorry, 163 with a Hulk appearance. And that's at an 8.5. Right there. Oops, I'll put it like that. Okay, I'm running out of room now. I'll do one more, then I will uh, pack these babies up. Got an X-Men number 211. First full appearance of the Marauders. 9-8. Gotta love it. Thank you. There it is, full cover. I got to make room for some more now. Mike Evans, careful of things stuck on Playboy. <laughs> Mike. <laughs> but listen, all the jokes have gone through. Char Charlo is, a, is an expert at taking those stickers off. Uh, and we've joked enough about that sort of thing. Believe you and me. Um, good evening, Marco. How's it going? Gundam says, Gundam Ram, LOL, it's easier to say. Gundam Ram, thank you. Rock City, Mike Evans, I'm sure those are elite clean level books for Hazard of Organic Matter. <laughs> Guardian represent Spartacus. Brouhaha, I haven't seen you in a bit, Brouhaha. How you doing? Good to see you. All right. Okay, what do we have next here? Guys, box number two of four. Box number two of four. We're going to talk about the X-Men in just a second, then we'll get to the next box. All right, let's see here. Uh, that one's got to go too. I have not seen any invoices yet. See, every box is friggin' different. No consistency at CGC. Let's put the invoices at the top of the box. No, let's put the box. Let's let's put them on the side of the box. No, let's put it inside the the, the slab with the slabs. No, like every every box is different. There's no instruction to these people on how to do their job. Every friggin' box is different. Aggravating, aggravating. It's a small thing, but it aggravates me. Go figure. All right. We got a nice ASM with Nightcrawler. Ooh, look at that. Uh, we've got a 161. And a 9.2. Love that copy. We've got an X-Men. No, there's the first one right there. We've got an X-Men 121 and a 9.6 white pager. Wow. 
we have an oh, um a spider woman number 80 number 85 number 37 first full appearance of siren in an 8.5 and it's a new stand edition it's a not bad copy nice looking copy actually come on Wolverine, newsstand copy, number one. And a 9.0. Just kind of breaks my heart a little bit, you know. You, you get rid of these spine ticks and such, and they look all nice. They leave the shop, but they come back, and you see spine ticks. It's really disheartening. I'll be, I'll be honest. It's very disheartening to look at some of these. It's like they didn't get there like that, like... Punisher limited series number one newsstand and a 9.2. Doctor Strange 169 and a 6.0. We've got a Phantom Stranger showcase presents number 80 and a 7.5. There you go. Doom Patrol. Oh. Uh, first appearance of Beast Boy. Oh, that's a nice book. And a 6.5. Doom Patrol 99. This one here I love. I, I love this Ditko book right here. Um, Showcase 73. First appearance of the... Who could type it first? Who could type it first? Showcase 73. First appearance of who? First appearance of who? Showcase 73. Who's going to get it right? For a thousand points. Who's paying attention? Let's see. A bit of a lag. I'll skip it until someone. Oh, what am I doing there? Oh, no, no, no. Uh, stupid thing. Hold on. Display. There we go. Treasury Edition gets it right. 1,000 points for Treasury Edition. First appearance of the Creeper. Sorry, Mr. MVP. Close, but no cigar. All right, let's pack these babies up because the stack is getting high yet again. You guys can look at these as I go down the, the list there. Brian Bowman gets it as well. Ugh. Bring on the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Uh, TMNT, baby. Don't think I have any TMNT here today. The boxes I'm getting are not magazine size. Um, so I think we're we're probably not going to be seeing any TMNT this eve. Hawk and Dove, Peter G. That's a good one, too. Another Steve Ditko awesomeness. Right? See, Dicko did the Hawk and Dove first appearance as well. Pretty sure. Pretty sure. Pretty sure. We're almost done at box number two. Guys, don't go anywhere. Two more boxes to go. We've only been going for about... Oh, my. No, that's not right. How long have we been going for? About uh... 8.30. What time is it now? It's nine. We'll go for about a half an hour. So we'll go for a little longer. We'll do another half an hour. We'll finish. We will finish the other two boxes. So uh, don't go anywhere. I completely agree about the theme song. There are a few things more useless than the X-Men 97's skip intro button. Yeah, I, I know. You got you to gotta listen to that, right? We're going to talk about that in just one second. It's a couple more books to go, and then we'll, we'll start talking about the, 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 that uh, pretty good pretty good cartoon. Pretty good. Pretty good is, uh, what's the name says? Curb Your Enthusiasm. Pretty good. All right. Here we go. All right. Let's do the last batch of books done here. We got a G.I. Joe, a real American hero, in a newsstand, number one in a 9.8. Detective Comics, 757. Uh, Canadian Price Variant, no less, in a 9.6. We've got a Seduction of the Innocent 3D number one. Oh, is this this is yours, Brian? Brian, is this yours? Brian Bowman.
Nothing wrong with that. Oh, Tommy got a 9-8. Tomb of Dracula, number 13. Origin of Blade the Vampire Slayer in an 8.0. Mr. Miracle, number four, and a 6.5. All right, and we got two more from this box. No, three more, I'm lying. Another seduction, number two is there, and a 9.8. We got an X-Men. X-Men 133 and a 9.6. Wow, look at this. Whose book is this one? Whose book is this one? Holy Kamola. Banger book. Banger alert. Beautiful copy of Hulk 181, first appearance of Wolverine in a 9.2. Nothing wrong with that's a gorgeous looking book. I just forget who's it belong who it belongs to. Wow, look at how clean that book is. I'm thinking this might have been a, uh, a CP a C, uh, CPR. I think I'm not sure though. Again, if it is, you'll be seeing it. All right, guys, that's box number two. Let's talk about, let's talk about, but first let's go through the questions here, then we'll talk about X-Men 97. If you have any thoughts about X-Men 97, right now is the time to talk about it. We'll take about a five, ten minute reprieve from the comics. We'll come back to them in about five or ten minutes. We'll finish off the other two boxes. But have you seen X-Men 97 yet? I want to hear what you think about it. I'll give you my two cents worth in just a minute. After I answer a couple more questions here. Um... Uh, Rock City says, speaking of TMNT, I've watched, I've wanted to ask this, how do you handle first print runs when pressing? I see how shitty the paper is on my two to four, and I'm terrified to touch them. I gotta tell you straight up, the, TM, the TMNT books, magazines, press out gorgeous. But you gotta be careful, because, um, yeah, it's, it's not the most, uh, you know, the paper can be... Uh, Make sure you use your, your, your SRP paper, your release paper is good quality, uh, not old. You know, make sure it's brand new and it's good because it, it takes impressions very easily, right? So if you press into that book and you've got dust or or it's contaminated anyway, or if the paper's kind of shitty, you can press that into the book and then it's a pain in the ass to get rid of it. But I, I, honestly, we have great success with TMNT books. I love, we love working on them. Um, yeah. So just go slow, same process, just go slow, new paper, and I think you'll be very happy with the results, because I'll tell you, I, I I love it. We're getting a, a first print in from Vancouver, I think, next week from Mike. I don't know if Mike's watching or not, but um, he just sent me some pictures of it, and uh, yeah, it's probably going to, it's probably like a seven and a half, eight right now. I'm hoping to get him up to an eight and a half or a nine on it. Excuse me, that's, excuse me, that's going to be pretty cool. Uh, Pete Bales, Paul, how's it going? Just joining now. I guess better late than ever, of course. Looking like mine, Brian says. Yep. The G.I. Joe and Wolverine ones were previously pre-screen rejects. Well, at first you don't succeed, Brian. We've we've had this conversation about CGC. Try, try again. Oy. Eric, how's it going? Sam uh, says, episode five makes me agree with Magneto was right. He many sucks. Time to get on a shirt. That on that shirt. Um all right, let's talk a little bit about it. I'll give you my views. And if you agree with me or disagree with me, that's fine. Let me know what you think. Listen, I started, I didn't really care. I, I, I used to kind of watch the old, I watched the old X-Men cartoon from time to time. It wasn't like a, a must-watch type thing, but I, I'd sit back and I'd watch it. I played the video games on Sega Genesis that were kind of connected with that uh, particular franchise. And that was a lot of fun. I really enjoyed playing those old video games. Um, but again, it was, it was okay. The animation was sub my opinion was not that great but disney has um done a great job bringing it back i tell you the animation is decent and the writing is just seems like it's a little bit more uh, edgier it's not um full of political bull bullshit that we've talked about here on the show and other with other franchises so far anyways um but yeah it's got heart and um 
they're, they're rushing through a lot of stuff pretty damn quickly. They could take their time with some of these storylines, but they're plowing through it quickly. Uh, but I'm enjoying it. I also hear they're going to bring spider Man's going to do a cameo, and I heard the Avengers are going to do a cameo as well. So they're starting to kind of branch out a little bit, but I'm really enjoying it. I don't want to... Well, yeah, I can spoil it. What happened with Gambit in, in, in Episode 5 was pretty great i don't know if it's you know a true demise or if he'll be back he'll probably be back because that's the way it usually goes but it was too strong what they did to genosha i mean they, they just wiping everybody out amazing it was pretty dark pretty dark and uh but i'm really really enjoying it um and the characterizations are pretty great too um let's see here what would my uh chat window go chat window what, what are you guys saying um the ranger says cool need your opinion on half my books about resubmitting marco says x-men a7 is amazing when they decided to do inferno i was blown away that episode five happened wow yeah i mean this this again this cartoon look i'm glad they're they're look at it. if this is an indication of where we're going i'll be very happy and I, i've done videos before i made comments before on different uh channels uh indicating that these movies and tv shows do have a direct impact on on the value of our comic books and yeah they friggin do don't you know people aren't looking for mr sinister now sure they are right and the prices are starting to, to go up a little bit announcements and uh excitement over these properties definitely does in, impact the value of our comic books for people to say they don't I, I can't understand why you would say something like that they just absolutely do um i'm enjoying seeing more characters when morph changes into them too pretty cool combos they come up with too and about morph again this is how much i did not watch the old show didn't morph die in the original series so obviously he was brought back or was a fake another marvel fake death i would assume um i remember i think he came back he was he died early on and then he came back near the end of that of the series right as evil morph and then he maybe came back i don't know but morph's character is it's funny i've been hearing on other other podcasts and and youtube channels that he's quite popular and they're going to br bridge him into the comics now too I, mean, I think they already did actually i'm a weirdo i love the x-men but think the coolest thing I've, i have to x-men is avengers annual 10 nothing wrong with that first appearance of rogue Mark, sir, how you doing, Mark? Good to see it. Notice one of my books come back in the last bundle episode. Has there been anything else come back, Mark? No, there has not. Oh, I got two more boxes, dude. Don't go anywhere. <laughs> Maybe they're in the other two boxes. Um, yeah. And, and remember, Mark, it could be somebody else's book too, right? Like sometimes you'll see more than one. Like how many Wolverine number ones did we just see? I don't know who's or who's. It's going to take me time to figure all that out. But oh, I got to make sure I put my invoices back in that box. Anybody else have anything to say about X Men ninety seven? Are you excited about the? I don't. I'm not even sure how many episodes it's going to be. Wolf died in episode one, but was saved by the sinister, by sinister and came back in season two. That's okay. That's see, I vaguely remembered that. I vaguely remembered that. Um, Again, I hope this is uh, a step in the right direction for the for the for Marvel. Um, like I said, when things were were really pumping the MCU, when things were really coming out and everyone was enjoying them and everyone was excited about going to the movies or watching stuff on TV that had to do with the MCU, it just everything was so much more. Everybody was so much more happier, <laughs> and the comics were selling a lot better, and the prices were at all times high, all time highs. Although maybe we don't want to see them go quite that high again because some of the prices were absolutely ridiculous. It's just nice to see uh, something that everyone likes and that people aren't all complaining about i'll be honest so the mojo the mojo episode i kind of the one with um sunspot and uh jubilee i kind of took me a couple of days to get through that one that was my least favorite so far but i do like them we were all chatting before and i said that the fact they kept the theme song was what made the most happy a couple other agreed no the theme songs the, is awesome man and they kind of updated a little bit too for sure, you got to keep. Well, that was the whole point. They're keeping the animation very similar, stylized is very similar. Characters even bring back this. Most of the most of the voice actors came back. And Rogue sounds really old now. Uh, maybe she had a couple too many packs of cigarettes. I don't know, or she's just really old. But she sounds she sounds the most different. Um, 
I think people people were complaining about Magneto's output in episode in episode one, but that's the ep- that's the ep- that's the outfit he had. It was an issue two hundred of X Men, right? Or was it, yeah, two hundred. Uh, he's uh, it was a one ninety one ninety five or two hundred where he's kind of arrested. He's in the front cover. He had that famous purple outfit on, so that was kind of cool to see. A lot of a lot of uh, Harkin. And you also notice a voice actor who played Cable sounds like sounded kind of more like um, what's his name. Uh, Josh Brolin. He sounded like Josh Brolin. Anybody else catch that? And anybody catch the Watcher and up in the moon looking down? Did you, did you catch that too? Little little, little uh, cameos here and there. She's three pack a day, sure. <laughs> there you go. Oh, you didn't, the X Men Night at 37.42 as Changeling. Okay, two hundred. That's right. Uh, a little Ace of Base in the last episode. Was that Ace of Base? I thought I recognized that. Yeah, it was that? Yeah, it was issue two hundred. Great, great issue too, right? Yeah. Well, anyways, I hope you're all enjoying it. If you have not watched the X Men '97 yet, you want to get on there and watch it. It's a lot of fun. Um, it just kind of, it's just, it's just, it, it harkens back to the '90s, which is again really cool. They've, they, they've, they've stayed true to it for the most part. It's not a show that's filled with, you know, punch, punching you or hitting you over the head with with political garbage uh it's just good x-men and it's fun 10 episodes great series x-men 97 mark i hope you're enjoying it it sounds like you are morph was based on changeling gotcha gotcha but changeling yeah changeling yeah that was changeling looked very weird he had an orange outfit on right changeling if i remember correctly i have i think i have that couple of those those uh but changeling is a much better name than morph isn't it Oh, is that what they're all Canadian voice? What's up with the whole Canadian voice actors thing? I knew that that's the old Spider-Man cartoon was Canadian voice actors. I didn't I didn't realize this show was all Canadian voice actors too. Um, I can't have watched it all if I missed an Ace of Base track. I'm gonna have to go back and uh, and check it out because uh, maybe there's an Ace of Base episode. Well, it seems like we're all. Does anybody not like it? Does anybody think it's crappy? I like to hear that part of it too. Is anybody not digging on it? Uh-oh. Okay. Other people are like, let's, let's, let's get back to the books, guys. I've got another 50 to go. Let me pull these two boxes over here. Give me one second. All right, here we go. Whew. Keep your Canadian dollars right. Let's see if we got uh Let's see if we start with No, we don't start with a 98 this time. We broke the trend. An older book though. We've got a Fantastic Four annual number 3. Oh my, look how clean this book came. Wow, look at look at that book. Clean as a whistle. I think the poor did that one. She was brat. She was showing off. I have a before and after this one too. Uh, Canadian Canadian edition in an eight point zero. Here we go. Look at that. And again, I'm going to show off the back cover because that was absolutely filthy. These Canadian ones are always just so filthy. Um, a lot of work to clean those up for you guys. There we go. What else we got here? Ah, we have oh another one. Not Canadian though. No, it's a Marvel superheroes twenty. Uh, popular Doctor Doom story and cover. Oh, I think we got some of Troy stuff here. I think this is a Troy book. Nine point zero. Wow. Peanuts number eight. Look at that. We also have a Dell a four color 1042 with uh, the chipmunks, the three chipmunks, and a 7.5. We got some more. We've got Alvin. Alvin for president, no number from 1964. 
And that is in an 8.0. It's a nice grades on these old Dells. Nice, look at this. Peter, don't go anywhere. We got some DC books for you. We've got uh, Batman 244, Denny O'Neill, Denny, Denny and um, a Neil Adams, uh, uh, Raza Ghoul and Talia appearance in, in, ba in Batman 244 classic cover in a 9.2, nice grade. We have an older Superman book. Uh, Superman number 76 and a 5.0. I think this book belongs to Alex. Alex B. Because I also see this X-Men number one. A coverless X-Men number one. Here it is. Now this book here, guys, you know, whoops, watch my video camera there. This book here, again, it's an X-Men number one, no cover. Could we have cleaned this up a little bit? Could we have straightened it out a little bit? Yeah, especially the back right here. Especially the back. Could we have could we have cleaned all this up? Yeah. But you know what? The book was still going to get an NG, so we just sent it as is. We also have an Action Comics, number 309, with a John F. Kennedy... Where's John F. Kennedy? I don't see John F. Kennedy. It says John F. Kennedy. I guess he's in the book, but he's not on the cover. In a 8.0. All right. So a lot of nice uh, Silver Age there, guys. We'll pack these guys up. We'll go back to the uh, chat room. Rock said, you must have been an Ace of Base fan. I, did, I didn't mind Ace of Base back in the day. I saw the sign. Right? That's the, that's the one. Uh, Marco, Morph is based on changing, but not the same character since his first appearance was in Age of Apocalypse. Oh. Pre-Scammer says, so the beard is gone. Yeah, for now. For now. Where, where, I'm, where I'm concerned... <laughs> I just, I'm not the most uh, frequent shaver. I've never liked shaving. I've got very sensitive skin. So I use my clippers and sometimes I let things go a little crazy. In the winter time, I usually, um, I usually uh, shave or I let it grow out. Sorry, in the winter time. Now the spring is here. You're probably going to see this top part go pretty soon. It shall return. I guarantee. Mark says, no, Mojo episode. So you like the Mojo episode. Well, that's good. I liked, I liked uh, Jubilee and Sunspot's connection. I kind of like that. It's a Mojo character. It's kind of, I don't know. I was never a fan myself in the comic books. So, but that's okay. We can all like what we like. Uh, Rox, I know all their three hits. I use the term hits lightly. Oh, they're fun. They're fun. All right, let's keep going here, guys. Almost not even a third through the uh, third box. Got to move a little quicker here. We're losing, we're losing some, we're losing viewers like crazy. Wow. Maybe the hockey game was uh, far more enjoyable than our XP97 talk. <laughs> or brief talk. All right. Let's keep her going. Alita Battle Angel. Here we go. Alita Battle Angel number one and a 9.6. Whoops, whoop, 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 whoop. There you go. This computer is slow, slowing right down. X-Men number nine and a 7.0. We have an amazing Spider-Man 62 with Medusa. Alita Battle Angel number one. We had a 9.6. Now we have a 9.8. Ah, New Mutants 98 in a 9.4. Been getting a lot more of these Deadpool books in. Gee, I wonder why. Oh my gosh. 
another one got one got two of these last week uh batman 20 uh 423 and a 9.8 this is the third one we got in a, just over a week which is pretty good we've got thanos number 13 albuquerque variant cover and that's at a 9.4 hulk 271 new stand edition and an 8.5 oh i was so proud that we haven't had any cracks yet and here's a crack first one pretty hard crack too marvel premiere featuring uh the legion of monsters with a crack right here you see the crack there i'll go like that i'll show you the crack the cracks right there there's a crack 8.5 Oh, this one got destroyed too. Yeah, that, that one's seen better days. Oh, look at that. You see, guys, that's what they'll fix. <laughs> when you see when you see it look like this. They'll fix that. That's the kind of crack they'll fix. Even the other one they'll crack. But if it's a little, a little teeny weeny micro crack, they ain't going to fix it. These they will. So I'll take these two books, this one and the other one, and I will put them aside and they will go out next week because I've already packed up my stuff for tomorrow. They aren't going in that box, but they will go out the following week. I'll get them off, put them off to the side. I was really, you know, I was pretty happy there. It was like things were looking good. I was about to say, no cracks. Been pretty good. Okay, let's see what else we got. Let's put this stack away first, and then uh, I'll, I'll do the last few books. I should make sure there are no cracks on these guys, too. I don't think there are. I didn't see any. Um... I'm no uh, press scammer says I'm no scammer. It's German for pressing chamber. Oh, oh, good press scammer. Sorry, Marco was asking if I'm at the shop. Yes, I will be at the shop this Saturday from eleven till two. Uh, Mark says finger crossed. Fingers crossed. There's something in there for me. There might be. It seems like I'm constantly getting stuff back from CGC, guys. So don't be discouraged if your stuff's not here today because it will, they will be here. Don't worry. They will come. This I promise. All right, put these back. Um, Peter G, some nice DC books worthy. Yeah, I agree with you. Press, uh, press Gamer says, wow, hot heart hit. Nothing to see on the outside. Nope, the box was fine. And that's fine. That's usually the way it kind of goes. Sometimes you just get it back and the box looks perfectly fine. It just maybe got dropped or someone, you know, um, it probably got dropped. This, this was, or they threw something on top, something heavy on top of the book and it kind of crushed it. But yeah, it happens. It's plastic. It happens. So long as I fill out the forms right away, no problem. No problem. Okay. Last uh, last five from this box, and then we'll head over to the final box. Again, one more full box of 25. All right, next we got an X-Men 101, and this is an 8.0. Another New Mutants 98. This one is in a 9.6. I'm checking for cracks. So these were close to the other ones, but they seem pretty good. We've got a Star Wars number one and a 9.4. Uh, we got a Miss Marvel number one and a 9.4. And last but not least, nice copy of Iron Fist number 14. First appearance of Sabretooth and a 9.2. Nothing wrong with that. Looking good. Looking good. All right, so there that's box number that's box number three. I'll 
I'll pack these babies up and then uh, we'll do box number four and then uh, I'm going to bed. <laughs> I'm going to go take it easy and going hard for the last four days here. Um, you still send to CGC? That's a side combo, I guess. I don't know. Uh, again, guys, we're just getting here today. I'm... Uh, having uh, three guests here on Thursday to talk about Canadian price variance. These are three individuals that know a thing or two about Canadian price variance. So if you have been uh, curious about CPVs, you're curious about perhaps starting to collect them, you're not going to want to miss this episode. Uh, we'll go for an hour or two talking about CPVs and um, yeah, answer any questions you might have. I'll ask the generic stuff, you know, but you might have more specific questions. So Get your questions ready and join us uh, on on, on uh, Thursday, 8.30. Same bat time, same bat channel. All right. Almost ready to jump into box number four. Oh, it gets warm in here with the lights, guys. Wow. All right, there's that. Got to make sure all the invoices are there. Get that over there. Give me one sec. Let's see, guys. Last box. Are they moderns? Are they vintage? Are they high value? I have no idea. I'll pull up the first box, the book right here. So close, so close, but so far. 9.6 copy, X-Men. 134. Why is my computer? There we go. 134. We have a co another copy of X Men 101. Restoration on this one. Color touch on cover. And a 7.0. Where in the hell do they see color touch? They got look at the book and. Oh. I think I do see it actually now. I think I do see it. Right there, 7.0. We got X Men 133 and an 8.0. We've got a, a Hulk 300 and a 9.4. Another New Mutants 98. This one's in a 9.0. Yeah, I can see why. I can see why, yes. We have a Wonder Woman from 1961. Silver Age Wonder Woman in a uh, 50, number 124. An amazing Spider-Man 201. This one is in a 9.2. We have a Venom Lethal Protector number one in a 9.6. And a Punisher number one, 1987 in a 9. Point two. Okay, and then uh, we'll pack these up. I got a got a nine point eight coming up, guys. Don't go anywhere. And still, almost a full box left to to go through. Uh, Mark says, "Have you gotten any? I hate Fairyland back when you got TMNT one forty six back. Maybe in past episode, first episode I've watched. Mark, I wouldn't even remember, my man." I'll be really honest, I won't remember. I can promise you when your order is done, I will contact you. I don't contact you when you have one book back or two books back. It's when your full order is back, then I will contact you and you can uh, come by and pick them up. I just have too many coming in to keep track of every single order and to remember everybody's single order. Um... 
uh, Cloud Walker, that Batman 244 is mine. Was a CGC7. Nice upgrade. I guess so, Cloud Walker, to a 9.2. That's great. Glad. I'm very glad. Uh, Rock City says, Pressmaker didn't want to assume. Okay. Uh, Pressmaker, they're starting. They do more cards. Okay, I guess they're talking about European. Oh, what am I doing? They're talking about European... Uh, European uh, grading companies, I guess. We've got about another uh, 18, 17, 18 books to go. I have no idea what's here, guys. Again, when you watch the show, I'm opening these boxes for the first time right here. I, I I cut them open, and then we, you know, as the show goes, I reach over and I grab the books and I show them to you. So I, I don't know. I peek at the CGC website from time to time to make sure there's no issues. There rarely are, once the books are there. Pretty exciting. I don't think I'm going to be doing this very often, but uh, I did send out um, some VHS cassettes today, as well as some um, video games to be graded. So expect to see those on the show for an unboxing uh, in the near future. Um, yeah, should be, uh, should be cool to see those come back. All right, here we go. We got a 9.8 copy, X-Men 125, and a newsstand, 9.8 white pager. Nothing wrong with that. Mystery in space. Uh, the number 21 from 1954, first appearance of space. Abby, a 6.0. Another mystery in space. Uh, and a 5-0. Some nice vintage books here. Books you don't see too often. An Action Comics 285. Another, we've seen this one the other day, uh, Phil's. There's another, another copy. This is a 5.0. Come on. We also have another Adventure Comics. More DC goodness here for Pete and other DC fans. Uh, this one here is a 5.0, and that's issue number 293 from 1962. And we have also uh, 293, Comet the Super Horse. Uh, yeah. Come on, get on there. There we go. We have a copy of X-Men 50 and a 4.5. Scott, Scott B contacted it, complained that the comic was loose inside the slab. Yeah, it happened. Listen. Hear that? This one kind of goes back and forth a bit. It's not uncommon for the slab to, to shimmy inside the 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 the, the uh, encapsulation. Not always, but sometimes it does, and this is one that does. So, yeah, it's kind of par for the course, right? We also have a uh, Haunt of Fear EC Comics from 1954, pre-code horror, in uh, a 3.0. And then we got a oh cool Flash Comics from 1947. Here's an oldie. Second appearance of Black Canary. And a 3.5. Guys, boy, I can tell you, they really, you know, when you see a Golden Age book like this, you know, um, you know, the, the, they give this book a 3.5. If this was a Silver Age book, uh, this book would barely get a two and a half. It'd be a two, this would be a two and a two and a half. This was like a, a 1960s equivalent. But because it's from 47, it's older. Yeah, they're a little a little more kinder with it. 3.5. Nice. You don't see that too often. We've got quite a few here. I'm just going to go to the big screen, guys, these last few, so I can get through a little quicker. Here we go. Uh, we got a mystery in space. 
uh, number 53. We also have a Space Adventure. Space Adventures, number 8 from 1953. Robot cover. And a 6.0. Pretty cool covers. Again, guys, this is box number 4. We've done approximately 100 books tonight. About 100 books. We got a Punisher. Oops, sorry about that. We got a Punisher number 31 and a 9.8. Oh, what am I doing? Sorry, guys. That's a Punisher number one right there. Here is the, uh, the Space Adventures. But you can see that. I don't think you could. Here's the Mystery in Space. Don't think my screen had been shifted. Sam's asking, are you going to press the cassettes or games? No, of course not. They're just going to go straight to CGC. I, I, I buffed the cases on the um, on the videos, on the VHSs. I buffed them if there are any fingerprints and stuff, but that's, that's pretty much the extent of it. We've got a Catwoman 80th, anni 80th anniversary, 9.8. We've got a Doom Patrol uh, with some color touch and a 4.0. And we've got a couple more still. We've got a Frogman. Uh, Frogman Comics number four it's from 1952 and a 6.5. That's a pretty nice looking book. And last but not least, we have a Superman 71 uh, with a Lex Luthor appearance from 1951. There you go, guys. 100 comics. We're down to eight people. I think I won't do that ever again. I think I'll just do two boxes. I think I think uh, four boxes is a little much, and people can't stick around for over an hour. So next time, I'll just do two. Guys, thanks so much for popping by again uh, to watch this unboxing. I certainly do appreciate it. Uh, I will be at the shop this Saturday from 11 until 2. If you have books you want to drop by for uh, pre-screening or if you want to bring books by to send in for pressing or cleaning or what have you. I also have just stocked up my $1 bin. So if you're in the area, come on by and have a look-see. Um, what else can I tell you? Charlo's still having that spring sale upstairs. So you can go visit him and, and the poor upstairs at the Comic Loft. And again, this Thursday, I will be hosting Doug Salipa and Angela Veroni and uh, Greg Holland as we uh, talk about Canadian price variants. You're not going to want to miss that. So see you Thursday, my friends. Take care. Have a fantastic uh, rest of your week. Well, rest of your week. I'm going to see you on Thursday, right? Have a great Wednesday, and we'll see you on Thursday. Until then, take care. Have a good night. Bye for now.